Marcus Brown is the current U.S. Open champion and ranks as one of the top five professional skiers in the world. So after all his blood, sweat, and tears to finally make it to the world stage, why head back to grassroots? For the answer to this question, let's join Marcus to see why one man's mission of bringing water skiing back to the people is not only of monumental importance to this world-class athlete, but ultimately to the sport itself. Hey guys, I'm Marcus Brown here at the Face to Face Tour. We're at Warman Lake outside Portland, Oregon. We're going to be here for a couple days of clinics. Then we're going to be heading up tomorrow evening to Lake Sammamish where uh, pretty much water skiing began. Clinic's about to get started. Let's go check it out. face-to-face -to -face tour is a grassroots movement and it was, it was kind of my effort um, to bring water skiing kind of back to the grassroots back to the public waters and that's you know face-to-face -face interaction is is at the core of uh, what the face-to-face -to -face tour is all about the typical day if we're at a clinic day we show up eight o'clock we start we have eight ten twelve people we get in the boat they're behind the boat. Jenny's on the shoreline running them through warm-ups. We got our Pro Star 197 barreling down the lake. We do 20 sets a day. Beginners, uh, intermediate, advanced, pros, even you know juniors is what I love to work with. The kids are the future of our sport. Hey guys, here at Warman Lake with Patrick. Met him down in Acapulco last year, actually this February. Young Ripper. We were working on squaring up to the boat trying to get more speed towards the wake, something we all love in life, speed. You see how when you hit the wakes, you're popping and bouncing? All that comes from actually that position of taking your hips and your chest and trying to strain to get to the next side. Problem was, you're pulling still with your lead arm, that, tri that lead shoulder, the one that's breaking wind, okay? Right. What happens when you do that, and you pop a little bit of air, you catch air off the wakes, the boat still twists you in the air, right? Because you, you, it's like a piece of toilet paper, a roll of toilet paper being unrolled in the air. What you want is you want the pull centered through your core. The only way to get that is as you open your hips, try to feel pull come onto both arms at the same time. Overall, it's coming. You gotta work on squaring the hips, feeling that trailing arm pull, and keeping your lean away from the boat. Those three things, the basics, We'll get you acceleration. We're all looking for acceleration no matter whether we're water skiing or driving our cars. And if you can work on that, it gives yourself more time before that next buoy to make a turn. That's what we're all about. Yeah, so you know, we got done at Warman Lake um, around 6.37, packed everything up, got in the truck, made our way up here to Seattle. And you know, it's not just a quick jaunt. It's not around the corner. So we end up it's all said and done with the truck. Things go a lot slower. Pull in here just a little after midnight last night. Lake Sammamish got a lakeside got a lakeside park, parking spot, but um, four o'clock, rise and shine. Out here, in Lake Sammamish, uh, crack of dawn. Got a little smoke on the water. We're gonna go lay some turns down. See if we can loosen up these uh, loosen up these bones a little bit and kind of show you how to do it a little early. started ripping some turns some people started filtering in and um, 
offered up some lessons and had a really good time. You know, I, I like to do more of this. I'll just kind of watch you, see what you do. Perfect. And, you know, maybe give you one or two little subtle basics. Sure, sure. Toe side, that's a whole different story. <clears throat> You're all cantilevered with your chest. The butt tends to go back because your hips are closed off to the boat. Okay. Try to simulate what you do on the other side so well by taking your hips, your trunk, your core, and twisting it towards the boat a little bit more. Gotcha. That's it. Okay, allow your legs to soften up a little bit, but try to feel your, just your whole core twist to the boat a little bit as you cut towards and through the wakes, going to the left. Okay. Does that kind of make sense? Makes sense. Cool. We saw a guy who's 60 years old skiing on a shape ski out there ripping turns at 30 miles an hour. We saw some people who are beginners just trying to kind of find their niche in the course. And we saw a guy who's been skiing for 40 years, but he's only been on the course for 12 sets. You know, that's, that's nothing. 40 years, he's probably skied thousands of times. And yet he goes out and he, and he rips back and forth on the ZP honeycomb. Ski that's older than I am, got dents all over it from smashing into it with his head. And it's like, man, this, this is where the sport really began. This is what it's all about. When I was a kid, the thing I loved the most was the spray. I wanted to, I wanted to see big spray. It was like, who had the biggest spray? Crystal Point, this guy's like a legend. You know, he was this world record holder when he was 14. And so anytime I'd get to see somebody ski from the boat, one of the pros, it was just uh, like the best thing. Made my day. That's awesome. That's nice. <laughs> it's, so, it's amazing. I just, just it's a it snap. It so, so easy. You know, it's just that so, snap and so bam. Hard. Just, just. That is what we need more of. The people need to see water skiing at this elite level and realize, A, how, how sick it is, how fast we are, how quick we are out of the buoy but also be that, that it's not much different what I'm doing compared to the beginner. I don't even want to tell you how many people we got in the boat because the wake's a little bit bigger than I'm used to, but we're just giving them a bird's eye view uh, up close and personal. Because when you watch skiing, water skiing on TV or from the shore, it does not look the same as when you're sitting in the boat behind the rope. It's crazy what we can achieve without even thinking about it. And you can see all of that summed up in the reaction on those people's faces when I come out the exit gates and I look in the boat and they're clapping and cheering and, and throwing the fist for me. And that's what the face-to-face -to -face tour is all about. And uh, hopefully we're getting it done. Oh,